This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Well, eventually Terry's going to find his way to mid South wrestling. Do you remember how Terry came in? What well, would he have been somebody sending in eight by tens? Or do you think you or bill or somebody would have made a call trying to inquire about his availability? No, I think it's the Eddie Graham deal. Okay. I think, it, I think Terry was just bouncing around trying to find his voice. So to speak his identity, uh, he wasn't making any money in some of those territories. He sure as hell wasn't making any money in Kansas city. Uh, so, uh, I'm sure he relied back on his old mentor and said, I need, can you help me get books in place where I can er actually earn a living? And so that's, I think, I think that's where the entry into mid South came, but I know that Eddie Graham was very influential in cowboy hiring, uh, Terry Taylor. So, uh, and it worked out the best for everybody, quite frankly, over the long haul. What was your first impression meeting Terry in real life? Very confident, somewhat arrogant, uh, you know, unique in that way. He, he was smarter than most people, high IQ, but you could tell it's, there was just something maybe missing there. Maybe genuality. I'm not sure, but he had been the wrestling business long enough to learn how to work the program and who to say the right things to and things of that nature, which everybody has to learn. It's not a Terry Taylor issue by any stretch. Some of these guys today are still learning it, how to, co how to coexist with this, with the office, so to speak. But I think, uh, but cowboy, when he saw the, saw his videos, he knew he could work, he could do something with him. We needed, you know, we needed some good looking baby faces. And that was just cowboys old school mythology. We needed good looking baby faces. And like I mentioned earlier, when you got Magnum TA and you got Terry Taylor, and you got the rock and roll express, you know, you got, you, you're covering your bases pretty good there with the, with the, uh, female appealing, uh, audience and, uh, Terry fit right in there. Quite frankly, maybe better than any of them. So he's going to debut January 4th, 1984, and he defeats Doug Vines. He's immediately put into a program against Crusher Darso and Nikola Volkoff, and he's going to be teaming up within a month with junkyard dog in a tag team match against these guys. Boy, if you're teaming with the dog about a month in Cowboys got big plans for you, huh? Yeah. Cowboys saw some, uh, something special in Terry and, uh, thought he was going to be able to fill a big void for us. And, and for the longest time he did quite frankly, but yeah, if you're going to be, if Cowboys putting you with his, with his bell cow, uh, J Y D then you, you are right. Hit the nail on the head. There's something there. There's a reason for that booking. And, uh, and cowboy was just going to make sure that Terry was getting the right rub, uh, and the right exposure. You know, you got two anti-American like heels, big guys, 300 pounders and Darso and the key and Nikolai. And of course, uh, uh, your main man was JYD. So putting Ter Terry Taylor there to, you know, to, to do a good job of selling and setting the table and then giving the hot tag to JYD. Uh, was just good math. I'm curious when you said, uh, he was checking a lot of the boxes, what exactly was cowboy looking for in a baby face back then, you know, as far as not just an on-screen character, but the guy behind the scenes. So the intangibles, you've talked a lot on this show about being reliable, et cetera, et cetera. What was cowboy impressed with that, that Terry knew when he came in? Well, Terry was a good worker. Fundamentally sound, uh, understood the psychology of wrestling Had good teachers. He had wrestled as, you know, you talked about earlier, some of these, you know, when you're young in the business and you're going to wrestle with Terry funk and some of those guys, you're, you're giving a great education. And so now does the wrestler is getting the education, take advantage of such, or does he look at it just as another night at the office and another match? I don't think Terry actually ever did that. He learned from all these guys. And so, uh, uh, cowboy liked the look, uh, he liked his resume. He liked how he was taught. Uh, and uh, he was young, he had youth going on, on his side. I'm not exactly sure how old Terry was when he first came to work at mid South, but he was a young, he's a, a younger guy. So, uh, there was a lot of things there that checked the boxes. Uh, you know, cowboy didn't know about Terry 
anything about Terry away from the ring, uh, or whatever. But, uh, I know that, that, uh, it seemed like Cowboy's ex-wife, Anna was really high on Terry Taylor, her and her girlfriends. Mm. Yeah. And so the, the, well, that's good market research. Yeah. Quite frankly. Uh, and so they, they thought he was sexy and handsome and, and, uh, you know, a star, he felt like a star to them. So, uh, I think all those things contributed to Cowboys comfort level of bringing Terry in and not messing around. You know, he got that one win over Doug vines. who was a, a really a good, uh, enhancement guy, but he, you can't make a living getting over on guys like Doug vines. You got to get in the fast lane and see how you run and how you can, how you proceed in the fast lane against guys that are considered main event talents. And there was no bigger main event talent in that era than JYD. It's a, it's a different era for promoting wrestling. I mean, it's all about, especially in this era here, selling tickets, live events. And one of the ways you do that is you uh, try to appeal to as many people as you can. And back then you had quite a few ladies showing up to the show. So you needed those good looking baby faces to draw the ladies in and get them to buy tickets. Right. Yeah, exactly. You, you play your entire audience. And the thing about it is that like a lot of old stagio, uh, uh, promoters and office people, you know, they, they, they always discounted women. Uh, and I don't know if that's just a chauvinistic way they were raised or they thought that it was a rite of passage to, you know, for example, when Moolah would bring her girls in to get booked and that happened more often than not when McGurk was, uh, primarily in charge cause just the old school thing of, uh, that, uh, Lily and Ellison, AKA the fabulous Moolah have been coming into those territories for generations. Um, uh, I, I think that, um, uh, you know, the women, when they come to town and get booked, they always had heat on them by the other talents. Reason being is that, you know, you're going to have a certain size card or a certain number of bodies. So when the four women came in to do their tag match around the territory, that meant that four of the boys were not getting booked. And if they weren't getting booked, Conrad, they weren't earning any money. And so then the women would come in and have this heat. And that's why they would dress in closets and, and bathroom stalls and all that kind of thing. So, uh, Hey, I heard a funny story about a Ruth Chris steakhouse bathroom thing. Well, I'll get into that later. Uh, sorry. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Conrad it's a joke. But that coal talks big. You're yeah. big coal. He, he does. Knows all he, the, he knows where all the dirt is. He does. Yeah. He does. So anyway, uh, let my family save your family some cash. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket, but we will save you money. It's not a matter if it's a matter of how much save with Conrad.com. He's going to eventually come back to mid South or should I say the UWF after Starcade? And he becomes a television champion again, this time defeating Buzz Sawyer. You know, what's, what's Cowboy think of Terry Taylor the second go around after he's come in, it feels like Cowboy really tried everything with him. He left, went and tried the whole Jim Crockett thing for whatever reason. That wasn't exactly what he was looking for. And now he's back at that point has a wrestler, not just Terry Taylor specifically, but when a guy leaves tests his, his medal somewhere else, and then comes back. Do you think perhaps the promoter sees him a little differently? Maybe he perceives him as coming back with his tail between his legs or what have you. I don't think so. I think, uh, it, it's, if you use today's standards, Conrad on that topic, then I can see where you're headed. Yeah. I, I can understand what your point of view and I'm not disagreeing with it, but in that era, Just uh, different. different deal, buddy different deal all together. So, uh, but Cowboy just saw that he thought he could, could, could reheat Terry up and get him back in the, in the, in the title pitchers and main event pitcher. Uh, and, and Terry had learned a lot. Terry was, uh, had improved his game. And, uh, I think Cowboy was looking for that to be maybe bigger than it was. I don't know. Our business model was soft at that point in time too. So, uh, that was kind of an issue. Let my family save your family some cash. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket, but we will save you money. It's not a matter if it's a matter of how much save with Conrad.com. 
Taylor eventually regains the TV title from the champion nature boy, buddy Landell, and they have a string of matches. what do you think of Taylor and Landell in the ring together? They had real good chemistry. Uh, they both were looking for a break. They both were looking to show off their skills. Uh, you know, buddy had a uphill climb because, you know, he's got that nature boy name. I never did understand why he did that. I thought it kind of marked him a little bit because all he, he was, a, he was a poor imitation of the original. Uh, original in this generation would be Ric Flair. The original in the other, in a previous generation would be Buddy Rogers. Right. So, uh, but Buddy took that, Buddy Landell took that, uh, nature boy thing, uh, to heart and a really good, he was an underrated worker. You know, if Buddy had more, was more reliable and wasn't, uh, so attached at that time to drugs and alcohol, uh, he could have been a whole lot better. He didn't, he never got to live his full potential in my view, but when he had matches with Taylor, uh, they had good chemistry. They had really good, solid matches. And it, it was really like a, a philosophy one oh one. You had the chicken shit heel who had to cheat to gain an unfair advantage. And you had the baby face who could out wrestle the, the bad guy until the bad guy cheated to gain that advantage. So it's classic philosophy. Let's uh, also mention that he's going to, he being Terry Taylor pronouns, pal. Thank you, pal. It's going to send buddy Landell packing out of mid South as well. Of course we know Landell's going to have uh, quite an interesting run with uh, Jim Crockett promotions. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. So you get a notice anytime we upload some new content and go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.